and they move extra, extra slow. So uh, Lightning Shield uh, would be a good counter to Siege, even, uh, because it does that immolation effect, and it does hit mechanical units, which most Siege are, so uh, except for maybe, uh, I don't know, Siege tanks, probably Lightning Shield wouldn't be that effective against. It's actually, probably be a bad idea to put Lightning Shield on Siege tanks. But on uh, we're talking Night Elf here, so if a Night Elf player is opting for Glaive Throwers uh, to counter your Shamans, Probably not a good idea. So uh, I don't know if this is a good counter or not. Night of players can tell me what their experience is. Heck, if any of you Night of players have actually come up against uh, orcs going night or lightning shield against your Jews of the Talon, uh, let, let us know how you counter it. Uh, just put it in the in the comments, or if you don't want to put it on the comments, there PM me on the forums. Again, my name is Sys Shark on the forums, and I've talked for way too long at the end of this audio commentary. So thank you for listening to my audio commentary, guys. I really appreciate it, and I definitely appreciate all the good comments you guys leave me either in the uh, audio commentary itself or if you want to PM to me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Even if it's not good comments, you know, constructive criticisms, I read them all, and I try to improve myself with every audio commentary, and we'll don't know how successful I've been in doing that, but I love doing this, and uh, I do it basically just because I love it, and it makes it all worthwhile when I get comments in my PM box that says, hey, I really learned something from your last audio commentary. Keep doing it. I you know, appreciate the good work, whatever. So yeah, please send me more PMs, guys. I love hearing from you, and I really want to involve the community every chance I get into this because uh, we're not, if you guys aren't listening and you guys aren't supportive of it, you know, we're basically talking to nobody here. (laughs) So hopefully you guys learned something from this one, and uh, maybe I'm going to do some more uh, audio commentaries on innovative strategies. So uh, if you guys have any other uh, maybe innovative strategies that you've heard about or maybe you do them yourself and you think they're uh, audio commentary worthy, I'd rather do audio commentaries on you guys' games than on pros because tip, I, I don't really think I'm qualified, and obviously you guys probably back me up on this, that I'm not qualified probably to do audio commentaries on pro players like, you know, my big faves like Grubby or, you know, Rotterdam, any of those big people there, or Lucky Duck. I love all those guys, but they're on a whole different level than me, and, uh, you know, although I enjoy watching their replays, and I think I know what they're doing, you know, I really don't. And I'd rather get the audios and the replays from you guys because, you know, those are replays that a lot of players uh, on WCR probably haven't seen already. You know, all the grubby and top uh, player replays, you know, they've seen them all. They're on the front page. So why would you want to see an audio commentary on those guys? Not to diss any of my other audio commentators who are definitely doing a good job of commentating on those uh, pro players. I actually just listened to a phrase audio commentary who did one on uh, FOV versus an orc player on Lost Temple, and it's actually going to be on probably before this one. So if you haven't checked that one, I'll definitely check it out. And also check out a Tainted Suns article on uh, innovation. Uh, if you haven't done that already, I, I read, I'm a big fan of WCR as much as you guys are. I read everything. I listen to all the audio commentaries. And since this audio commentary was kind of about uh, an innovative strategy, uh, let's link up together with that Tainted Sun. Uh, interview. If you guys haven't read it already, just look for it on the front page, or you can click on articles. I'm sure it'll pop up there. Uh, I think it was a part of a series, so if you want to read more into it, you can. Article is definitely something very fun to learn about. But all right, uh, I'm all done. I'm done, guys. Voice is tired. It's early morning. Th- thanks again for uh, listening to the audio commentary, guys. Hope you appreciated it. Looking forward to your comments. I'll talk to you later. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Oh, you're still here. That's good. Uh, I have a few corrections I want to make. I just finished listening to the audio commentary, and I noticed a few things, and I wanted to do some checking on it, so here are some corrections from the audio commentary. Uh, I did want to uh, actually add that the crow form uh, from the Druids of the Talon is a good counter uh, to Lightning Shield. As Lightning Shield only affects ground units, you can morph uh, the units that have a Lightning Shield on them into crow form, and that'll kind of negate the effects of Lightning Shield as well. Uh, also, I said a few times at the end that the Farseer got level 3 Chain Lightning, and he actually got the level 3 Wolves, and he actually got them a little bit earlier because he was using the Wolves to do a little bit of harassment and scouting, and they were invisible, and he indeed got level 3 Wolves, not the level 3 Chain Lightning. I uh, also wanted to do some checking on the stacking of Lightning Shield, and I rewatched the replay in slow-mo, and it is confirmed. The Lightning Shield does definitely stack. And if I'm wrong on this one, please call me out because I will rewatch that replay three or four times and slowed it down to one half speed and looked. And there were definitely some uh, Druids of Talon that were taking the hits constantly. You could kind of watch how the uh, HPs uh, of the Druids of Talon went down I- incrementally, uh, definitely when they were closer to multiple Lightning Shields. So I'm going to say that this one's confirmed, guys. Lightning Shield does stack. I um, also want to uh, confirm that the Wisp Dispel uh, does have a mana burn effect on friendly units. I 
just did a custom game real quick and used to dis dispel on my uh, on a night elf unit, uh, one of the heroes, and it actually does negative 50 mana uh, in an area of effect for the dispel, which uh, I knew that it did a dispel offensively. I just didn't know if it did it uh, defensively, like uh, sorry on your. Uh, like own units, and it does do that. So, although it would get rid of Lightning Shield, it also gets rid of the uh, mana from the Dreams of Talent. So, uh, take that for what it's worth. I also wanted to point out that I mentioned that Dryads have an auto dispel, and although they do, it doesn't work on Lightning Shield because it's kind of considered a beneficial buff. Uh, as you can move the units in and use them offensively. So if you want to use Dryads to do the Dispel, you have to manually cast it. And correct me if I'm wrong on that one, I actually didn't do any testing on that, so call me out on it if you want. Uh, I think that's about it. Just wanted to make some few corrections on the audit commentary. Uh, thanks again, guys. See you next time. Later.